this is a little different today. I am starting a brand new project here with a brand new traveler's notebook. So we're going to get started on that in a second. But first, I decided to stitch this journal because in the past, I've noticed that when I work uh, with mixed media, the cover of my books tend to start coming apart and I end up having to stitch it um, in the middle of it or, or, you know, when it's almost full and it's kind of harder to do because, you know, your pages are completed. So this time what I decided to do is to stitch it uh, before I did anything inside the book. So here is, uh, for some reason, I didn't get to record uh, how I punched the holes, but it's no big deal. You see the piercing tool right there on the right. I uh, punched three holes or pierced three holes, and then you saw how I stitched the book just using some, uh, that was crochet yarn, very thin crochet yarn. And so I just stitched it and now my book is going to be ready. Uh, and hopefully uh, the cover will not be, <laughs> it won't, I know it won't uh, start coming apart just because when you add liquids, sometimes uh, it kind of, you know, runs through the crack of the pages and it gets to the bottom. And so that's when the pages sometimes uh, start detaching from the cover. So I went ahead and started, uh, oh yeah, by the way, this is a mixed media project. This is my brand new quote journal. And I'm starting in July. This is the second half of the year and it's a brand new journal. And we're gonna start with a mixed media project. And I've decided to use some old book pages. I ha was showing you two different kinds of colors of the pages of the paper. Some, you know, obviously this book is a lot newer and so the pages are not as vintage looking and so i decided to keep to use this ones instead of the other ones and the other ones by the way those were in french i bought an old french or book uh written in french and which i love that um, but i ended up using this one which is uh written in english now that the gesso is dry, I went ahead and applied a coat of turquoise acrylic paint. And obviously the gesso is attaching super nice um, to the, you know, the color is attaching well to the gesso. And so I did that just to create a texture. So if you notice, I flipped the page and it kind of pressed on it before the paint uh, was dried. And you can see that they, it left some marks, different marks. And I really like that. So then after that, I still wanted to add a little bit more texture. So I grabbed just a piece of a little plastic bag. I usually go through my trash if there's something there. Uh, I also sometimes save the packaging that, you know, some of the supplies come in just because they're good for um, when it's time to do a technique like this or sometimes to put behind a paper so that the paint doesn't run on the other side. Uh, just a way to protect the book, the traveler's notebook. So then I'm adding a little bit of water uh, just to kind of lift up some of the paint on some of the areas where it was really thick. And again, by using the, paper, the plastic, it just kind of adds a little bit more texture. So now I'm going to go ahead and add those little pieces of the old book. It's really not an old book. Um, you know, I go through... Uh, yard sales. I love going yard selling and so I grab things like that or I go to thrift stores. This is a really nice way of recycling books uh, to give them a second life. And you know, you only need one uh, or maybe two if the colors of the pages are different. And there's many, many techniques and many different projects that you can use old pages like this. Uh, I did a wreath of flowers once for a school project and it was auctioned at a school event and it, everybody loved it and I got the kids involved um, you know making the flowers when my kids were in elementary I spent pretty much my entire day there uh, working with the kids teaching some art classes uh, whenever we had projects I worked on the tiles that decorate the walls on the school believe me i was there <laughs> a lot anyways that was just a little tip there of what you can use those old book pages for 
So now that I've dried and glued those pieces, I go back and I cover everything with clear gesso. So this is my second coat of gesso. And the reason why I decided to do that is because the if I was to put the paint straight onto the old books, uh, the little pieces, they are very absorbent and they would just suck up the paint and then I would have this really dark color, you know, random pieces of paper on top of my page and I didn't want to do that. So by covering it with gesso, I'm kind of protecting them so that when you add the watercolor, the watercolor will sit on top and you can still, you'll still be able to see the the little writing, the writing on those little pieces of paper. So now I'm using some Prima watercolors and you know, I'm going for a really dark background and you'll see why. I know this video is going to be a little longer than I, my usual videos, but it's totally worth it because I wanted you to see uh, in detail all the different layers and the techniques that I use in this, in this mixed media project. So I'm going around with just different kinds of blues and turquoise around and notice that I'm leaving the edges of the pages white. So when I apply the gesso, I didn't go all the way at the edges. I just kind of kept it in the middle. I kind of wanted to have, um, I don't know how, how to describe it. I, I wanted to have the white framed around it. So do you see how you can still see the writing on those pages on those little pieces of old book? And that's what I was after. The watercolor would have probably even damaged the paper if I would have went straight on top. So now I just got this brand new, well, they're brand new to me, Distress Crayons by Ranger, by Tim Holtz, Ranger. And they are awesome. They were on clearance on a website called createforless.com. Um, they're based here in California and I, they have some really good deals. And so I grabbed these, they were like $1.50 each one. And I grabbed, you know, maybe five of them in my favorite colors. And so I went around the, the paper and I added, added these little dots, they're not dots, but these little marks of all the different colors. And because they act like watercolor, um, I was able to just go back and then add a little bit of water and start manipulating the colors and kind of making them bleed into each other a little bit. Um, that's the beauty of these, that you have a lot of control uh, because you are obviously adding the color uh, in the spots before you even add the water. So. The purple color, which I'm starting to like purple. I've never been a purple girl, but I added some because it went so well with that turquoise and it was a little bit too strong. So as I was adding the water, I was soaking up some of the color with a wet paper towel. So then I wanted to have uh, another brighter color on the top and then you'll see why because it's going to match with uh, some of the flowers that I'm going to be working on in a little bit. So instead of adding more watercolor, which I was afraid it was going to bleed into each other, I went ahead and grabbed one of my stencils and just an ink pad and that little dabber. I also think, I think that is also by Ranger. Um, and then I use my stencil just to add a little bit of that um, diamond pattern in the yellow, just kind of randomly throughout the page and it added a little bit more um, brightness to the page. So there you can see how dark the background is, but you will see now why I needed the background to be dark. So this technique is called paper painting. And it's not really the fact that I'm going to be painting on the book or the paper. It's the fact that you're using the paper to create a sort of a painting or art. So the paper itself is becoming the paint. Now you could leave the paper uh, without adding color. You can actually use pattern paper. And you're basically using the colors <clears throat> in the pattern of the paper as paint in creating an image. But because I'm using in, you know, just a plain book, uh, you know, 
paper here. There's no color to it. I've decided to add some color. Again, I'm using the Prima watercolors. This is the tropical uh, collection. They have different um, little boxes like that one that have different themes of color, different color palettes. And I really like this one. There is another one that I want. It's called the pastels. It's really pretty. So I'm drying the paper and I wanted you to notice that I also dry the back, not just the front, because I don't know why it just, sometimes it just, it's better when you uh, dry both sides. So here we go with the technique of paper painting. So I'm cutting petals and this is why we had to color the paper because I, you know, it, it's easier to do this than to cut the paper first in the shape of the petals and then going back and uh, adding the color. You want to have a random pattern uh, of the paint on your pages. And so when you cut them, the leaves or the, you know, the petals, they're they're very, they're all very unique um, because of, of just the irregularity of, of the, the, the paint, how it adhered to or it attached to the book. And see, because it's an old book, it ad attached, the paper just soaks up all that water. So I went ahead and kind of rearranged or arranged my little pieces of paper or the petals in a way that I think they would fit. I knew exactly what shape of flowers I wanted. And then I kind of moved them around and you'll see that I'm still gonna end up moving them a little bit more here in a little bit. I'm going to use my little handy dandy, always, my blue uh, glue pen, and then also my little tweezers. So I'm removing the petals. So, you know, it kind of gave you an idea. Obviously when I put them back, they're gonna look different. So I'm going to start attaching each of the petals in the shape, but I wanted you to notice the shape of the petals. The outside petals have a little bit more of a curve to them. And then I start with the outside petals. So there's one on the right and then the other one on the left. And then you're, you'll start filling in the center with your other um, pieces. And I did cut a lot. Obviously, I saved you the time to watch me do that. And there's some, I have tons of them so that as I'm working, I decide to maybe change it because the shape wasn't right or maybe the color. I was looking for a different color. And you want to leave some space between the petals. You don't want them 100% overlapping on top of each other. And, and, um, you know, again, those little tweezers come in handy and then I go again and of course I'm going to move the flower from where it was originally. And I'm using the back of the tweezers, you see, see if you can see it there, to kind of, I rub the petal as I put the glue on so it can stay because a lot of times I end up picking it up with my hands as I move away. So there I've attached all three flowers and I'm deciding to use what uh, orange is going to go as the what do you call that you know the center of the flower I guess I I should have uh, researched what these flowers are called I don't think they're called da daisies or yeah daisies or something like that but they're they're not going all the way around so I think they have a specific name so I was using that orange, but as if you saw, I put the paint on and then I picked it up again because it's that translucent um, paint. And if you saw my last video, remember my analogy of the slip, when you wear a slip underneath your skirt or your dress because it's so see-through. <laughs> so there, this white paint is what's, uh, it's representing the slip because I gotta put that underneath first as the first layer so that way the orange color will have a strong matte background to adhere to it so it won't be as transparent so on that bottom flower i felt like it needed some another one that was sticking out a little more so that's why it was good to color a lot of the paper so i just went and cut another piece and then added it to that and then again, I continue to add that little, um, that paint underneath as a base coat. 
and again always you know check your paints when you're using them sometimes they're very thick and strong some are called they're like a glaze so that when you know when you think of a glaze paint it's it's very see-through a very translucent if that orange paint wasn't that I probably would not have needed to add this white coat at the bottom but I like it it kind of adds a little bit more of um you know a stronger obviously stronger orange but it it even softens up the orange itself and if you leave a little bit of the paint sticking through it just adds again just something I don't know just something more pretty you'll see uh, I end up adding a lot more white highlights to each of the flowers this is another Prima paint and it's purple and it's becoming one of my favorites to use whenever I need a dark color. So I don't use black. I use this really, really dark purple. And this page was inspired by art and a piece of art um, that I found or that I saw on Pinterest. And so I kind of made my own twist, uh, my own interpretation and I loved it and I've been wanting to try this paper painting and there's so many I have so many pins under this type of art form and I've been wanting to tackle let me tell you it does take a, a you know a little bit of a time because you have to cut paper you have to uh, worry about your colors where you're gonna put in highlights and all that but it just to me it's just so beautiful so interesting one of these days I'm gonna try and tackle that um and create some sort of art i've seen where people make anything tigers flags birds dogs just using paper but they use the paper as the paint so now i'm adding some stems to each of the flowers and did i tell you by the way this is a quote journal oh yeah i did i did i say that at the beginning so i'm going to be adding a quote and I'm still in the month of July, so the quote is still under the theme of freedom. So again, a watercolor. Last time I ended up using a different type of paint, and uh, this time watercolor just works so much better. And then I needed to have some leaves, and I was trying to add, because the stems were a darker color, the, wa uh, the watercolor worked great. But when it came to the leaves, that watercolor green wasn't standing out uh, as much as I needed it to on that dark background. So I grabbed some acrylic paint and this one, if you can see, it's so um, heavy that I don't, I don't need to use the white slip, <laughs> the white uh, base coat at the bottom. I can just use that straight out uh, from the can and it's fine but the leaves are still getting lost you can't see them so I go ahead and I this time I do use some of the watercolor just to add a little bit of a dark um, I'm not gonna call it a shadow but it kind of e you know is and you can see the, how it pops up the flower the leaves I'm sorry the leaves it makes them just pop out and now you can see them so maybe it's not a shadow, but more of an outline. And then I try to always either dry it or wait for it to dry. And I think I left the room for a minute. And then when I came back, the light had already changed. So you can, you'll see how I changed this. It, it took me part of the, you know, most of the day because I kept walking away from it and the light kept changing. And so you'll see that I'm going to be even changing the area pretty soon. And I'll have to ask you, so notice this, this obviously is darker. At the beginning of the video, I was using daylight and sunlight coming through the window. And I'll, you'll see the other one and I want to know which you prefer. Do you like this natural light? Or when I switch to my other area where I'm using those big studio lights. So I'm using the white to add more highlights to the flowers, to the stem, to the leaves. And I love adding these little white dots on any drawing or any painting that I do. 
see those right there they just add i don't know some sort of a fun accent to whatever it is that i'm working on so i'm using the white just to kind of highlight it i didn't really pay attention to because when you're adding highlights you have to think where is the source uh where's the light source where is the light coming from and there really isn't so i'm thinking maybe it's coming from the top because again there's not one direction i'm just adding the white just to make the the art itself pop out of the page so once again i adjusted the lighting here a little bit and then now i'm going back with this micron um, pen and it's by sakura which they're based here in california i want to see if they're open to the public because i would love to go into that uh, to their shop um, to go check out what kind of uh, art supplies they have but anyways these pens are they're kind of like water resistant I'm going to say it like that. You can actually use them and they won't bleed if you were to be working with some watercolors. A lot of artists use this type of paint for writing, for outlining. And so I did that there just to add more dimension and to make the flowers pop up. So there, finally the quote. <laughs> the culmination of the whole point of this layout, the quote itself. But you know what? the the art is obviously um, one of the big important parts of this is to get to have fun and to get your fingers covered in paint right so there's my quote i printed it um i wanted the you know the quote to stand out so that's why i printed it on one paper and left a lot of the white around it and it says never be afraid to do the things that make you feel free because this month the quote theme is freedom and i that's exactly how i feel i'm going to work on what i love and work on anything that i want to do and it definitely makes me feel happy and it, there is a certain freedom about it so i went ahead and add a little bit of a uh, outline because you know i doodle uh, around the little boxes there and also around the page. I'm going to be coming to the end. Finally, we are done. I hope you enjoy this technique. I know it was a little longer than normal, but it was totally worth it because you needed to see how this pa uh, paper painting works. And I hope to have some more, um, you know, videos using this technique so we can become better at it. So thanks so much for watching you guys. I hope that you have the time to practice today, whether it's just with a quote or even just painting or doodling uh, while you're in line waiting somewhere or waiting for your food to get to your table. So thanks so much. Let me know if you have a question. I will have a list of everything that I've used, of course, and stay tuned for some close-ups. Until next time, take care.